is a continuation of the video I made about converting an RC car into an RC plane, but this time I'm actually going to make it fly stably. Last time I said I was going to add a tail to the plane, so that's exactly what I've done. I've cut out some pieces of foam board and stuck them on the back to act like a tail. The issue with that is, the whole of that plane was shit, so I really just need to go back to the drawing board and make a new one. The first step in making a new plane is to make a new set of wings, because the sets on the old plane are really battered and I don't want to reuse them. but this time the wings aren't pitched, they are flat, which should increase the strength of the bottle, because last time I had to cut the bottle in many places, which really weakened the structure. Whilst it's sad to see it go, it's time I harvest the organs from this old plane. It's time to assemble the plane. Airplane assembly complete. So this is the second version of the plane, minus the battery of course. Uh, I've added a, a proper piece to connect the motors to hold them together better, so that there should be less of a difference in position, because one of the, some of the motors were kind of wiggling about last time, but this should lock them together. This probably won't fly too well, but... That landing took a big chunk off the nose cone, and it feels hot. The big issue with using the RC car receiver unit is that it only has a range of about 20 meters, so I'm going to replace it with this more powerful setup. Now you might think that using a big controller like this with a 200 meter range would negate the necessity to have the Arduino, but that's actually not the case. I still need the Arduino to control both motors simultaneously because I can't just plug the ESC wires into the receiver and control both motors with this single throttle which is what I'd ideally want to do. 
because I have to throw it and control it at the same time. And if I have to push both of these up like this to make the motors thrust up, then I won't be able to fly it. I'm having quite a lot of issues trying to get the Arduino to sync up with the receiver because this is a PWM pulse width modulated signal and I want to read it as an analog signal. So I created a filter using a capacitor and a resistor, but I don't really want to use that in my final design. So now I'm trying to do some maths to solve this. Now I just said that I'm going to use maths to solve that problem, but I don't really need to do that. Turns out there's an inbuilt function in the Arduino library that can measure pulse width modulated signals. So I'm fine. Now I need to remove the old RC car receiver unit from the plane and replace it with the one that can connect to this. That's not good. The Arduino on the right is my test Arduino, which I use with my computer to test and simulate. But the one on the left is the one I'm actually going to use in the flight. So I need to put the wires from this one onto that one. Okay, so I've upgraded my plane and now it's using this receiver, this big boy receiver. And it's using the Arduino because I want to be able to control both motors throttle using this single uh, controller. The issue is one of the motors isn't working properly and the code isn't running properly. I think the ESCs may be a bit knackered as well. So I'll show you what I mean. Notice that the motor at the bottom doesn't rev up at all. This is 100% the only correct way to test a motor. After an hour of sweaty work, I finally worked out what the problem is. The problem is this ESC. It's f So the new design will be using this brushless motor for thrust control and this servo for your control. So the servo will sit behind the motor and going left and right will control the direction of the flow out the back. So hopefully that will give me good flight control. I'm not going to say that looks good, but I think it looks good enough to try and fly. Believe it or not, those laughs were not at me, but at a cricket match that was happening nearby. Now that plane nosedived, and it's pretty obvious why. The motor is situated above the centre of mass, so it's going to create a net moment, causing it to turn round to face the ground. My first attempt at a solution to this is to put a pad behind the motor, so that when the air hits the pad, it gets deflected upwards, which should create a resultant moment going the opposite way to help it pitch back up. This plane has failure written all over it. Well, that didn't work. So the next attempt I'm going to make is to shift the centre of mass back so that the wings, the lift from the wings, creates the moment upwards that it needs. OK, so the bricks here are balancing the weight of the plane just like the lift would if it was actually flying in the air. And I've moved the battery to the back to see if this will make it stable. If, when I fire the motor up, the nose dives down, so it goes like this, then it's still unstable. But if it manages to stay balanced on these bricks, it should be able to fly. Did that work? I'm not sure if that worked. That was a lot better. 
Shifting the centre of mass has actually made this plane inherently unstable. Sometimes it pitches up, sometimes it pitches down. Um, I think this goes to show that just shifting the centre of mass doesn't make things fly. After all the crashes my plane has been through, it's pretty knackered. Um, I have a solution to the moment issue, to the fact that it keeps pitching down, and I'm going to show you this in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.